Welcome in, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Today is what, the 17th of February. We're live here. Uh, if you are just tuning in, I'm going to give this just a second. We send out a text message every single time that we go live. So if you didn't already know that, uh, we have a number. It's 813-296-8553. And you can get a text message every time we go live. So I just sent this out and yeah, you can kind of see it. Um, and it just gives a little summary about what we're going to talk about. And, uh, and then, uh, you could tap the little, there's a little link you can tap and, uh, and join right in from your phone. It's really easy. Um, and we don't bombard you with a bunch of, uh, yeah, we don't bombard or we try not to bombard you with a bunch of junk. Um, so far, we haven't done any promotions <laughs> in the last few months that we've been using community to send those messages out. So um, if you're here uh, for the first time, welcome in. We've got Sophia. We've got Dane. We've got Colin. We've got Arturo. What's up, Kyo? Jim's in the house. Jordan. I need a sip of my coffee. Uh, Simon, what's up? Jonathan, good to see you. Kevin, Theodore, Maria, Brad, Charlotte, Jason. Awesome. Welcome. C, Janine. Uh, we've got an awesome guest today. I'm really excited. Uh, today's Wednesday, so I host every Wednesday. If you don't know who I am, my name's Matt. I'm the CM CMO here at Legendary. And uh, we do these live every single weekday, Monday through Friday. Dave hosts typically. I, hope, uh, I host uh, occasionally on Wednesdays. Uh, it creates a little break in the flow and, uh, gives a new face to the show. So, um, today we're going to welcome in, uh, Alexis and, uh, Alexis, uh, is a single mom. She has tried, uh, sort of like me, she's tried just about everything you can think of to, uh, make money on the internet. Yeah. Whether it's drop shipping or eBay or whatever, but, uh, if you guys in the comments, if you can please welcome Alexis here, that would be awesome. Give her a big sort of uh, welcome to the virtual stage, I guess. Alexis, how's it going? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm doing well also. Where are you from? Um, so California, basically like Orange County, LA area. Around cool. there. Yeah. Right on. Awesome. Um, well, for everybody who's here, there's still actually a lot of people still coming in, but for the, everybody who's joining, um, give them a little bit of background on you. Give them a little bit of history. You, you said in our questionnaire, like we haven't met before, but you said in your questionnaire, you've done MLM for 13 years. Just take us back, like all the way back to your journey getting started, uh, whether it's like entrepreneur or online. Yeah. So, I mean, like you said, and thank you so much for having me, but you know, like you said, yeah. I was a single mother for 19 years, you know, I'm not anymore, but I always knew that I wanted to be an entrepreneur, but I just, you know, I didn't know how, and then I had three kids that, you know, I needed to take care of and I didn't want to be away from them. So, I mean, my, you know, MLM journey started, my son's about to be 14. So 13 years ago, and I started with, you know, a makeup, a Mary Kay, you know, and I didn't even really, I just, I didn't know of anything else to do. So, you know, a sure. friend told me about it and I was like, okay, well this, you know, sounds great. And, you know, not really knowing about exactly what it is, you kind of just go in, you know, feet first, head first, and just, you're like, what is this after a while? So, I mean, even, you know, I kind of stopped that. I didn't really like it because, you know, makeup's really not my thing. And it wasn't something that I was, I didn't enjoy it. So I then got a job back in, I think it was 2012, worked there for a bit, but you know, I used to just take my kids to daycare and I would cry leaving my kids and, you know, cry going home because I just knew it was the same thing over and over. And, you know, their father wasn't a part of their life. So it was really just me. And, mm. you know, I just, I wanted to also, you know, find something where I could make an extra income to do more because living in California, it's, very expensive. So even making the money that I was making, I was still having to be on state assistance. And so, you know, I found I was on, I think I just started getting on Instagram and I found another MLM and I was like, well, you know, I mean, let's be real. Everybody puts their best foot forward on Instagram. So I was like, well, everybody else is doing great. So I might as well just hop on there too. And 
again, I didn't know, like I kept, I would look for things to do. You know, I remember just seeing things like stuff yeah. envelopes or become a medical biller or whatever. So I joined yeah. another MLM. I did that for, you know, years. And then I actually lost my job in 2017. So after being at the job that I was at for nearly six years, I, you know, lost my job with no real warning. And as a single parent, you know, being a sole provider, that's terrifying. Having three kids, you know, looking at me and they didn't, you know, they're hungry. And I'm like, I have no money coming in. You know, I have, I had like a two week severance. And so that really Jeez. just started me on my journey. Yeah. I was terrifying. I remember sitting my kids down and being like, all right, I lost my job and you know, we're going to figure this out. And I had already been on state assistance, you know, like I said, living in California, it's expensive. So even with the money that I was making, I still needed to have that. So and, you know, that was something that really just bothered me because I knew that that's not what I wanted for my life. And it's a blessing to have it there when you need it. But it wasn't something that I thought I would ever see myself going back to because when my kids were very young, that's what I, you know, was on. So mm -hmm. when I lost my job in 2017, that really just put me on a, a path to really starting way more things to just even keep a roof over our head. So, I mean... Yeah, you can ask more, but there's there's a lot with that one. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just trying to imagine, like, because I've had feelings where I've had a feeling where I lost a job or like my income has basically disappeared overnight. Um, mm -hmm. I was working for a company that went bankrupt essentially, and it was just like there was no severance, it was just done. And um I can't imagine having that happen with kids. I, I could not imagine the feeling like the pit in your stomach, just like, yeah. Ugh. it was one of the worst times, like in my life, it was yeah. terrifying. It really was. And, you know, I got, uh, I think unemployment for six months. So I was like, okay, well, at least I have that. And then, you know, when that ran out, I was, I found myself in food bank lines and, you know, all kinds of different things, having to get help from my church for Christmas for my kids. And, you know, so it was just not the best time for me at all. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I think, you know, it's, I don't know, the more that I talk with people and meet people, I think that that's more common than like we think. Like sometimes yeah. I've, I've always, I kind of felt like that. Well, geez, it's just only me, but I think like life is long. and I think people hit, you know, like we all kind of hit those, not to downplay what you, I mean, what you went through is definitely like brutal. Um, yeah but it's just tough and we got to take care of each other through those, you know? Um, so how long ago was that? So that was like July 21st, I think of 2017. So, okay. Yeah. Um, so then, so let's start there. So uh, you've done lots of different things leading up to that. Uh, what happens after that? So, you know, after I had lost my job, I mean, even when I was getting my unemployment, I just, you know, knew that, and it wasn't, you know, as a single mother, you're not, you know, it wasn't like I found this time to just let me use this time to become an entrepreneur. Like I have tracked, I, be, I applied to over 400 jobs and I got one call back. Um, never, I guess got, yeah, never, I got one call back and I think one interview and I was like, is this? Wow really happening. So, you know, I kind of took that as a sign because like I said, I always knew that I wanted to be an entrepreneur, but I really had no other choice because, you know, as a single mom, you're not going to, you know, put yourself first. You're going to make sure that you're taking care of your kids and you have food on the table. And, you know, they're obviously number one. So, you know, I did apply to a number of jobs, but I also started, you know, all these different, you know, MLMs basically. And when one, you know, wouldn't work, you know, maybe I made a couple of hundred dollars here or a thousand dollars, but you know, being real and honest and transparent, you're really losing more money than you're bringing in with mm -hmm. the things that you have to pay. So, you know, I did, man, I think back in 2018, I remember doing, I think it was like roadside assistance. I remember I was with a company, um, an MLM and my friend knew my situation that, you know, money was just dwindling and I wasn't getting the income from that MLM. So she had called me and told me about this roadside assistance thing. 
And I just did whatever she told me to do. And so then I started to make $2,000 a week. Okay. And I was like, whatever the hell this is, I'm all for it. Um, yeah. So I, I did at that time really kind of start to understand a little bit of the email marketing aspect, you know, like using get response and that type of thing. Um, but they changed their commission plans. So it went from like, I think $90 per commission to like $20 and then who knows what happened to the company. So then I was just back to trying to find other ways. I mean, I've done Forex trading. Um, I started, that was a hot mess. I mean, I started um, drop shipping, you know, did the whole eBay thing where, you know, I can never have another eBay account in my name because I didn't know what I was doing and they are very, you know, particular with who they allow on their platform. So if you don't know what you're doing, you really are just doing yourself a disservice. And yep. so I had the whole PayPal holds and, you know, dealing with customs. And just, so, I mean, I ran the Wait, whole so, so, but t so there's a lot of people who don't know, I know about this PayPal thing, right? We've, if you've been in this industry for even a little bit, <laughs> yeah. a little while, uh, you know about the whole PayPal thing, but explain it for people who are here and brand new, because here's the thing is there's people who are learning people going through our courses, right? And we tell them you don't have to deal with merchant processors or merchant accounts, but I, to most people, they don't even realize what that even means. So explain that PayPal hold thing and how, and what happened. Oh my goodness. So when I started to, you know, I came across a, somebody was selling a, I don't remember a drop shipping course. I think I took the course and like I said, just needing to make an income, I kind of, you know, did what I was told. I did what they had said. And so if you don't understand the way eBay works, you only have a certain, um, a certain number of days. I think it's three days for handling time. So if you're being trained and taught to purchase things from China and it's taking three weeks to receive it, you know, you're going to have people that are calling for chargebacks. And so that was what happened, you know, to me, you're not, if you don't have the product in hand, you know, it's, it's going to obviously take you more than three days. So I had, man, I think two situations, maybe three where they had just claimed that um, they didn't like that the product took longer. And hmm. so eBay is a platform where they are, they side with their seller, I'm sorry, their buyer, their customer. And you can put on your platform that you, you know, won't accept returns and all that type of stuff. And even if you are right in your case, they'll open a case, um, they will take the money from you. Your PayPal account is linked to eBay. And so if they determine, no, you know, we're gonna side with our customer, you need to, they can keep the shoes or they can keep whatever, and you need to give that money back, you they're gonna take that money from you. So that's what ended up happening, you know, to me. And I just thought, okay, well, I'll just go make another eBay account. And I had no clue. Like they track your IP address. I mean, it's not mm. your, your Wi-Fi router. They do not play. So they do know, not play. Yeah. They're like, they're serious. They mean business. So it's a great platform. You know, if you have things around your house to sell things like that, but yeah, yeah drop shipping was just something that, you know, even when I, even before I found legendary, I was going to go back into it and deal with the Shopify. And I just was like, not wanting to do that. So yeah. yeah, if you're not careful, you really just shoot yourself in the foot, not knowing what you're doing and being told, you know, it's yeah. people tray this, it's just easy. And, you know, it's just, you know, you have high profit margins and you just get this little, you know, whatever, and you're just going to sell it for, you know, pennies and make all this money. It's just really not that way. So yeah. Hmm. It's interesting. I, um, yeah, that whole PayPal thing is, is such a conundrum. It's, it's been like that since like I started in this industry in like 2009, 10, and that it was, it was talked about then and it was just starting to happen then. But basically like they have a threshold for a certain, a certain amount of uh, refunds that they start to like look at and be like, okay, something's interesting there. And then once the chargebacks go up to a certain percentage, then they're like, okay, now something's really alarming. And let's say, let's say <clears throat> you have a hundred people purchase your product and five of them uh, issue a chargeback. Basically they claim that they were fraudulent charge or uh, they didn't get what they paid for or something like that. 
even if they don't really know what they're doing, um, they file for that chargeback, then basically PayPal says, okay, we're shutting down your whole merchant. You can't process any more sales. You can't do anything. And oh, by the way, we're keeping your money. <laughs> so all of it, because yeah. they want to have a reserve where if more people do that, they have the money there to pay those people back in a refund. So it's just an interesting, it happens a lot. Uh, but what I, what I think is important there is, um, you've sort of learned the interesting piece, you know, I always like, I, I even hate to spin this, but the interesting piece I feel like for you is that having gone through all of that, right. Uh, it puts you at a huge advantage, which is sounds crazy, but it puts you at a huge advantage where, you know, and you've experienced all of that. And that's right. <laughs> as crazy as it sounds. And I'm not trying to make light of it because even now I bet it still stings a little bit like that. That sting just never really goes away. Right. Um, I, I think, you know, um, it makes for great content. It really does. It, it all depends on how you see it, because also the your ability and my ability having been through that. Um, it, it allows you to educate people in a more specific, in a more meaningful way about sort of merchant processors, drop shipping, things like that. Um, so I think a lot of times people are hesitant to fail. They're hesitant to try something. They're hesitant to like give something a go and really go after it because they're just unsure or whatever. But I think if you really put your head down and, and sort of, you know, bulldog your way straight ahead through whatever you've got coming. It, it allows you to learn faster. It allows you to make mistakes. It allow and and sometimes people can't handle that feeling of failure. I know I couldn't for a long time, but the truth of the matter is, is like if you fail and continue to fail and continue to fail, uh, eventually some at some point down the road, um, you know, be smart with your money. Like don't pour you know, a hundred thousand dollars into a bunch of different MLMs. But, um, but if you're creating content and you, uh, you get to the point where you've failed a lot, chances are you come out at some point on the other side, you learn enough where you come through in the other side and enough energy and enough commitment and enough dedication gets put into something where uh, something pops out the other side, you know, it's almost like birthing a baby a little bit. There's right. tons of pain and lots of trauma and lots of chaos. And then, you know, there's something beautiful that, that comes of it. But, um, so, okay. So you go through that whole experience and I cut you off earlier, but I just think people don't understand when we just drop a little line that says, you know, no merchant processing, no, none of that stuff. I mean, that stuff is an, I mean, that is a massive, massive pain in the ass that most people just have no clue about, which affiliate marketing yeah. is something that, you know, you get to completely bypass all of that nightmare, which is incredible in and of itself. And most people won't appreciate that until they've experienced that nightmare. But okay, yeah. I'm, an, I'm done on my rant. I'll let you continue now. Uh, what? So you do that whole drop shipping thing, the eBay, the PayPal, all of that. All right then what? Man, I've done so much. What did I do after that? Um, <laughs> geez. Oh, okay. So I think that's when I started a, oh my goodness. We started to, oh, I got involved with um, an NFL player promoting CBD oil. And so we started to promote, I started to promote that. And, you know, when I had done Forex, this was like 2018, I had yeah. known that I just really didn't like the MLM anymore. I didn't want to have to be, you know, online. And I know you said you've done MLM, so you're, you know, familiar with it. But, you know, it's a lot of work for, you know, little pay. And so, you know, when they wanted me to promote it, I was like, I didn't really have any, any choice. I mean, at that point, hmm. that was when I just really was getting by barely even, you know, having to borrow money from, you know, my, my boyfriend or even my kids at that time to, you know, cause my twins were older and working to keep a roof over our head. So I just did whatever somebody told me was really going to bring me money. And I think at that time I was also on, um, I was being a personal assistant on care.com, you know, so I was just whatever I needed to do to make ends meet. And so yeah. we actually 
stopped doing the CBD oil and then I started a, another MLM. And, you know, in the beginning it was great. And it was, you know, I, I thought because the money was coming in, like, okay, maybe now this is really it. And I still didn't yeah. know, you know, I didn't really know of affiliate marketing and I, I just knew, okay, well, maybe this is, maybe this is the one, maybe all those other 13 ones that I had done, maybe those weren't the ones that would work. And now this is the mm -hmm. one that, you know, God has for me. And so I kind of, I ran with it and I just wasn't happy. I was just mm -hmm. not happy in the slightest. And I started to make, I mean, I guess they say technically the money that I was making, you're the top 1%. Um, but being honest for me, even if I was making, you know, $1,500 a week or $1,800 a week, you know, having people, you know, on my team next to me that weren't making any money was just really started to bother me. And mm -hmm. I don't want to ever be that person where, you know, I'm making money and I have people that aren't, they're not making money. They have $9 in their bank account. They, you know, don't have food for their son and they're paying these monthly fees. So, you know, yeah. I really had to that when this was back in, I think October of 2020. So, okay. you know, throughout 2020, my check went up and it went down and, you know, I just thought, okay, well, if you're familiar with MLMs, you know, it's this hamster wheel that you just, you know, you got to keep getting the people and, you know, you bring in 20 and then you got, so I was just, I was burnt out. I, I just yeah. didn't want to do it anymore. And I had known that years prior, but obviously, you know, I was just doing whatever I had to do. So, um, mm -hmm. I made the decision to leave, you know, MLMs, you know, back in October or November. And so that brings me to, um, where I am now. And yeah, yeah. So there's a lot in between there, but you know, that's the meat and potatoes. I love it. I love it. So you're, so in a nutshell, now you're in affiliate marketing. Um, and what what attracted you to affiliate marketing? What attracted you to sort of um, well, you're on TikTok. You're you're doing social media. You went to twenty two thousand followers in seven weeks. Uh, mm -hmm. What what attracted you exactly to affiliate marketing in particular? How did you hear about it? And like like doing more of a digital style affiliate marketing as opposed to boots in the ground MLM. So, I mean, I, so right before I, I left the MLM and then I, you know, and I'm still working on this, you know, in the near future, creating my own courses and things that I've always wanted to do, but just never, you know, pulled the trigger on. And, mm -hmm. you know, then I started to just know that, you know, TikTok was a platform that, you know, was like Instagram was 10 years ago that you could really, you know, grow your following. And so I knew that, in the future, I was going to need, you need audio, you need an audience, you need to have people, you know, looking at whatever you are promoting or sharing. And so I started to grow, you know, my page on there. And I, I don't know how I got on the affiliate marketing side of TikTok. you know, somebody just kept popping up. And then, you know, when you like the content, it brings more up. And, you right. know, so I just, I just was watching people and you know, doing the research, I just really learned and coming from an MLM space, you know, like I said before, you're doing a lot of work. And when you get to be, I guess, you know, a leader on your, on your team or in, you know, the higher up or whatever you want to say, there's even more work required. So I was working constantly. I mean, all day, every day, you know, that whole thing. And so I knew I don't want to work this hard. I'm, I'm willing to work. I have a great work ethic. Like I'll put in the yeah. work, but I want to be able to like take a vacation and, you know, make an income. So right. um, I watched several people for, you know, probably about a month. And then, you know, I was like $7. I mean, let's be honest. I've invested a hell of a lot more money than that. So, you know, I did it. And honestly, it has truly been the biggest blessing for me in, as little as six weeks. So, I mean, I really can't say enough about it. Like the education that you receive and, you know, affiliate marketing, you're not limited to just, you know, I'm so used to the MLM space. If you're in an MLM that's health and wellness, you can't go and do another you know, MLM. So with affiliate marketing, right. you want to promote, you know, dog training, you could promote dog training. If you want to promote, you know, whatever it is, 
you're not limited and you can do so much and it's more behind yeah. the scenes, you know? Yeah. So I'm very grateful for legendary to say cool. the least. Yeah. And then, and then how did you find that your TikTok starting to post and stuff, what's been your sort of routine and how did you get started on TikTok? I mean, did it feel, did, it, did you have any hurdles getting started with it? Did you feel like it just came natural or had you done content creation before this? Um, I mean, I've been on social media for a long time. So, you know, doing the different videos, I mean, I feel like TikTok is just so much like more, it's fun. It's like funny. You can create different little fun videos. Um, so in that aspect, no, I hadn't done that. But, you know, again, being an MLM, you have to put your face out there and you're telling your life story. So I was very familiar, you know, with that. So I had actually my platform, my TikTok account was open in 2019, but I just never... I never grew it okay. and I just started to post, you know, I just started to, I think I purchased the course. I think I had already, you know, when I got the uh, 15 second leads, I think I was already maybe at 5,000. And so that cool. obviously helped me, but you know, knowing that you need to stay consistent, you know, this is why my background has allowed me to know, you know, what you do need to do and staying consistent and staying in front of people. And, yep. um, I think for me, just what's really helped me grow is I'm very just transparent with people. I mean, I don't really, you know, hide anything. I just, I tell my story. So, you know, I think people really resonate with that and mm -hmm. they want to hear the truth from people. So. So one thing that I notice about you that uh, is interesting to me, and I'm curious your take or your thoughts is, um, it, it seems like you're able to take a disproportionate amount of, uh, of, of your audience and turn them into paying customers. Is there anything secret that you're doing to do that? Is there anything that comes to mind or is it just you create really good content? I mean, I think it's a combination of, of, you know, I create great content. I mean, but I feel like for me, me being, you know, authentic and telling my story, it, that really helps. But I also do like to go live quite often. Um, How often? I go live, I want to say four times a week. You know, I, I try to do more, but um, I also like to show people, you know, for me, I used to ask people, okay, what do you do for a living? And they would say, you know, I'm in real estate or whatever. And I, you know, for me, it was like, what does that mean? What is that, you know, exactly? Can you break that down? So I like yeah. to treat people the way that I would like to be treated. So I like to go and show, you know, I'll show them, you know, the, the course, but I also show them, you know, the things that I use, I kind of break down, you know, exactly what I pay for every single month, you know, with click funnels and get response. And I show them how I create my emails and, give them examples of what affiliate marketing is and, you know, just really showing them the back end, I feel like makes them more comfortable than just saying, click the link in my bio, you know, and I also, Interesting. yeah, That's... I also, I tell them that if they want to message me, you know, I allow, I give them access to me. Like I have my Instagram that's linked in my TikTok. So I tell them, you know, message me on Instagram and I like to send voice notes. And so I feel like, I can just connect with people and just being open and honest and raw, you know, that's mm. just what has really worked for me. So I'm, I, I heard three things, um, three things, or actually maybe four things in there kind of four. Okay. We'll call them the four keys or something, but, uh, one great content, meaning just good content that can actually grow your audience. I mean, that's a big thing. If you don't have a great audience that, um, or if you don't have great content that can help build the audience and gain a little virality, it's not good. Uh, cause your channel just won't grow. <laughs> and that's kind of the prerequisite for the rest of the four, uh, for the rest of the three, uh, two is going live and it's really interesting to me. So I, I don't know what it is, but you have this, uh, King has this, we've done webinars with this, with this lady named King. Uh, she's from Tampa and, uh, she, every time she goes live, she would, she would collect sales. I mean, it was just like, every time I go live, I have an influx of new customers and, and it just is like clockwork all the time. 
uh, and there's other people too. Uh, three uh, that I heard from you is uh, allowing access. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting to me. Uh, that's also another key that we see with people um, is, is allowing access, is allowing people to message me or allowing people to email me. The fourth one I hadn't heard before, though. The fourth one, which is sort of taking people into your detailed sort of, here's what's going on. Here's my get response. Here's my funnels. Here's my, what, how do you actually do that? I understand that you're live on TikTok, but like you're on a mobile device. Are you like just turning your phone camera around while you're live and just, uh, what do you actually do? Um, well, you know, I'm on, I have my, my Mac that I use, but I have my little gorilla, you know, pod or thingy and I have my okay. phone. And so, Wait, you know, gorilla, gorilla, what, what is that? I'll, I'll grab it. I have this little thing that it's like, you can bend it and stick it on whatever. So, you know, I just set it up right there and it'll face me for a while and I'll explain, you know, what affiliate marketing is. And I like to go and I'll show them examples on, you know, YouTube, like okay. you know, I find like, you know, Amazon finds 2020 or whatever. And I'll show them like, this is what affiliate marketing is. And so when I'm doing that, I'll flip my camera. And so I'm showing them my screen. And I'm, you know, I'm breaking down where to go because if people are new to affiliate marketing, they're like, what, what does that mean? So for me, that's just the best way that I learn. And it's true. Like it's when I go live and I get off, you know, throughout the day, I have, you know, new people that are signing up for the course because, you know, I'm being honest and transparent. I'm telling them I did learn all of this from this course. And, but it is really helpful for people to see you know, just to walk them through a sales funnel, if they don't know what that is, they're like, well, what, what does that exactly mean? So I really go back into my ClickFunnels account. I'll have, you know, my actual website open and I'll have my ClickFunnels. So I show them how it's matching. You know, I okay. break down, like, if you want to change a picture, you can delete it. Like I just break it down. I feel like in steps, like how I would like to learn, you know, like cool. I'm five. You know? So yeah. that has really, been, uh, you know, something that's really helped me. That's cool. I, I, we always explain actually one, somebody who was on the show once explained it, like you're really, when you're teaching skills or teaching, you know, th things, when you're teaching things online, basically you're a third grader teaching a second grader. It's, it's not rocket science. It's not advanced algebra. It's not biochemistry. It's, right. it's just a third grader sitting down and showing somebody how to do you know, two plus two, like <laughs> it's, it's more simple and you want to break it down more simply than, you know, some of these advanced weird techniques and strat. It's just like, make this super simple. Um, I, I really quick, um, this is just to jump back to your reference for anybody who's here, maybe you're listening or you're watching or whatever. Uh, this is the gorilla pod. I think that you were referencing, right? Is this the one that you have? Yeah, I believe so. Pretty similar, at least. It's the same yeah. idea. It's just a it's just a tripod where you can you can put your phone, you can put a camera, you could put uh, different things on it, whatever. But it's just a flexible thing, so you can flex it around or whatever. Just make sure if you go purchase one of these, you can go to Amazon and just search like Gorilla Pod. But if you purchase one, just make sure. I'm not sure this is the exact one. Just make sure it can hold a phone <laughs> because yeah. if you buy one and you're hoping to have your phone on there, it, you know, and it, you buy one that's for an actual camera, it might not work. So I think um, it's the Gorilla 50 if I'm remembering it now. Okay. So the Gorilla, yeah, Gorilla 50. Okay. That one I think was different. It was like the 250 or something. Yeah. So yeah, just like you said, make sure it holds a phone. Okay, cool. And then I think, you know, for people who are newer, maybe you're watching list podcast, whatever. I think the other thing to remember is like, for instance, you're, if you're, if you're trying to, um, if you're trying to, uh, um, get results, you know, similar to Alexis. So Alexis has like 27,000 ish followers on TikTok, And, um, I think there's, I think that you produce a disproportionate, meaning um, a larger amount of sales and volume of sales than most people with that amount of followers. That's why I wanted to unpack that a little because I, I sense that you're doing, uh, that you have 
strategized a little bit deeper than maybe most just pure content creators. Um, And I think that you've got something going on there. So, you know, for people who are here watching, um, you can, you can, uh, we, we put up her TikTok. I'll put it up again. It's manifestation mama. And if you're listening as a podcast, it's at manifestation mama on TikTok. but just go watch, like, just go watch the strategies, go watch, you know, join her live and just sit there and observe like, what does she do? Don't sit there for entertainment purposes, go in there and watch for how do I, how, what can I, what nuggets can I pull from this strategy? Cause you do different things and you've been around for a while. Right. And there's, there's huge benefits that come just in what you've seen, just in what you have observed and seen and watched and soaked in for the last decade or more. Uh, and that's what I find too, is just, you know, people can bring different sort of business ideas or business models or whatever for online to me. And I just have a, a big library of reference over the last 10 years that I can pull from that helps give me insight into things. So, um, that was cool. And, uh, thanks for sharing a little bit about your, you know, your back, your kind of strategy, the, the closed door strategies that you do. Um, cause those are the real gold. I think, you know, aside from just being an incredible content creator or whatever, I think that those side strategies, and then the final point that I put on this is don't, you know, for those of you who are trying to grow your channel, I wouldn't focus too much on those side strategies right away. So don't get distracted by them because ultimately your real goal where, where the real growth and potential is, is in growing your audience that has to happen to enable everything else. So if you go and watch Alexis and you're trying to unpack her strategies on going live and her strategies on um, how she sort of go when she does go live, she displays, you know, her get response, all these different complicated things. And that causes you to go from creating five videos a day to one video a day. It's going to defeat the whole purpose because with one video a day, it's going to be way harder for you to grow your channel to 10, 20, 50,000 followers. So those are strategies that you can implement on top of your daily operating procedures. Uh, but don't let them, you know, sort of detract from your daily operating procedures. If that makes sense. Does that make sense? Do you have anything to add to that? You know, I just think that being consistent is something that's just huge. You know, I, something that makes it easier for me is, you know, take, if take a Monday or take one day out of the week and, batch your content you know we're all busy we all have lives kids husbands whatever so taking a day to do you know 13 videos that's what i did you know thursday so i had all my videos set for the week you know you could put them in drafts so you're able to enjoy your life and you're not like geez i gotta go make (laughs) these three videos you know that's really helpful also understanding your analytics and knowing when your audience is on TikTok. so Hmm. i've is that as well so but i would just say you know being consistent you know post three three to four times a day i would say starting out and batch your content that'll make your life so much easier and you know have fun with it i feel like this is allowing to just have so much fun and be funny with the little videos that you can make and then also you know i throw in there videos where i'm talking you know and telling my story a little bit you know as much as you can in you know 30 to 60 seconds so being, you know, be yourself, be, just be you. Cool. I love it. That's a great way to close it out. Um, well, thanks for coming on. We, uh, you know, for people who come on, uh, we'll occasionally reach back out and see if you want to come back on, uh, in 60 days, 90 days, whatever. We'd love to have you back. Uh, this was really valuable and, uh, yeah. So, you know, sometimes we have guests on and we get value and sometimes we get disproportionate value. And I felt like we got, you know, extra value from you today. So that was really helpful. And I think, uh, you know, based on the comments and everything, I think people felt that way. So, um, thanks for coming on. And if you need anything, just, you know, hit me up, hit us up. Uh, we're always here to help. Thanks, Matt. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Bye guys. Yeah.
All right, guys. Uh, I have her. If you're watching, I have uh, her TikTok right here. It's uh, at Manifestation Mama. You can see it on the screen right now. Go give her a follow and watch her strategy. She is killing it. Um, and uh, if you're listening on a podcast, it's at Manifestation Mama. Go give her a follow. Uh, if you're newer, hey, before you leave, uh, you can find us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, Wake Up Legendary. We're also on a few other platforms. Uh, if you search us on your whatever you listen to podcasts on, uh, search Wake Up Legendary, and um, you can you can subscribe. Leave us a review. Um, we would love if you subscribed and left us a review. Uh, so more people can find us and uh, wake up legendary with us. And lastly, if you want a a reminder to your phone every morning, uh, Monday through Friday when we go live, you can text the letters W U L W U L stands for wake up legendary to eight one three two nine six eight five five three eight one three two nine six eight five five three and you'll get a short little text message every time that we go live. So. Uh, that's all we got for today. Uh, have a great rest of your Wednesday. Peace out. Take it easy. And we'll see you back here tomorrow. Dave will be hosting tomorrow. We got another great guest and uh, we'll be here live at 10 a.m. Eastern.